You're wondering why people don't believe in aliens? Everybody believes in aliens. I, I believe in aliens, all right? So that's not the issue here. The issue is whether aliens have visited Earth and do we have good evidence for that? And fact is, we don't, okay? So uh, I got no problems with aliens out there. And I, I, I want to meet the aliens. Everybody wants to meet the aliens. I worry that they visited us in the past, but they happened to land in San Diego during Comic-Con. And so that nobody noticed them. And they went back to their home planet saying, hey, they're just like us. <laughs> they look weird and gather together just like we do. So no, I'm cool with the aliens. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist, and right now you're watching Behind the Brand with Brian Elliott. Hey everyone, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with the incomparable, the amazing, the incredible Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil, welcome to the show. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. That I don't need all of that up front. <laughs> Let me earn that by the end of the show, and then maybe someone can think some fraction of what you just introduced me as. That sounds fair. All right, so let's do a little 20 questions here. Have you ever played the game 20 questions? I guess so, or variants of it. 20 feels like a lot of questions though. But uh, and my, my, but the premise is that my answers are short and pithy. So I'll, that's what I'll, that'll be my challenge. <laughs> but this is a game I remember playing like on road trips when I was like 10 years old. Here goes nothing. 20 questions with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil, what's the hardest part of being you? Uh, it's trying to understand what everyone is thinking and how their brain is wired so that I can best communicate what I need to to them. That's, that is my biggest challenge in the day. Otherwise, I'm just lecturing and that's, that's not really communicating. So that's, I put it there. What's one thing you can't live without? Ice cream. <laughs> ice cream and books. Uh, ice cream and, and books. Yeah. What's a talent that you have that someone wouldn't normally know about you? Uh, I like origami. I've liked it my entire life. And I don't think I've ever told that to anybody at any time. Um, but uh, my skills have diminished over the years. But, you know, your basic stuff, I'm, I can still knock those out. And including the bird that flaps its wings as it goes by. Yeah. Yeah. I want to learn. I want to hear more about that. How you learned that. Uh, what are you really bad at? Yeah. That implies that you try to be good at it and you're bad. There are things I don't try to be good at. I already know I'm not good at them. Maybe in another life I will focus on it, but it would be uh, composing music. Okay. Now we're going to fantasy land a little bit. So like if you could trade jobs with any CEO or not CEO, just if you could trade jobs with anyone in the world for maybe two weeks or a month, just sort of dip into their world, do their job. Who would you like to trade jobs with? Uh, an Olympic marathon runner who wins and they're the first back into the stadium. That's gotta be a feeling like no other that there is after running for so long and so hard, coming out at the head of the pack and 50,000 people stand and cheer. I like it. I, I, I'd trade that for a day. Who is someone living or dead that you'd like to maybe have dinner or drinks with? Oh, Isaac Newton. No, no question about it. Except I think about that often and I realize how difficult that would be. So I have to ignore all the difficulties because I'd say, he'd say, well, how'd you get here? Oh, I drove a car. And he says, well, what's a car? And I'd say, well, it's a horse drawn carriage without the horses. Well, then how does the carriage move? And I said, well, it has an engine. And he says, what's an engine? Well, it runs on gasoline. Well, what's gasoline? Well, okay, we have a battery version of it. What's a battery? And there's no, then you realize how long ago he was, regardless of his brilliance, it would still take a lot to have a meaningful conversation about what's going on in my life. <laughs> Well, let me do a follow-up question with Sir Isaac Newton. What would you ask him then if he had just one question to ask? I would try to assemble a problem that we face today and couch it in a way that he can understand it and then see if he can bring some insights that no one today would be able to accomplish because he brought insights in his day that no one, no human ever born before him could do. So I think there's a lot of uh, unrealized 
problem solving abilities that we could benefit from if we let them know what challenges we face. And but he'd be a fast study, by the way. He would he would pick it up quickly. It would just be a lot of front end investment to get him <laughs> to get him uh, up to speed. Uh, so then it begs the question: What is the modern day problem that Sir Isaac Newton ought to be looking at? Uh, I would say our uh, we need a different kind of battery. We're using batteries today, and batteries were invented 150 years ago, and it's one of the last remaining 19th century technologies that are still infused in our 21st century uh, lives. So maybe he find another way to store energy that we can then recover from later. But then I'd have to explain to him what energy is and how it's quantified. And because energy was not a fully developed concept at the time he was discovering the laws of optics and gravity and inventing calculus. So that's a, that's a challenge, a nice, interesting physics engineering challenge that I think he would rise to. What is the funniest thing you've ever heard about yourself on the internet? <laughs> uh, hmm. Funniest thing. Uh, I got my first vaccine recently um, on the sort of the educators category, and uh, I, I had a tank shirt under my regular shirt, so it was easy to just gain access to my deltoid. And the the hospital, the Har Harlem Hospital, uh, made this a kind of a mini event, all right. And then they used my picture for social media. I was perfectly happy to do that if it gets if it encourages people who might otherwise be a little, a little. All the other very apprehensive astrophysicists. All the apprehensive. Right. I could possibly help people overcome that, and I didn't have any problem with that. So I'm there walking down the corridor, and and they're media person snapped a photo and then that photo I, I posted that first so today they posted it first I posted it second and I I'm a, I looked a little extra cut in that image you know the deltoid bicep a little swole just a little just a little I think and boy the comment thread <laughs> just did not end it was like oh my gosh I'm trying to teach you about vaccines here people and they're, then they're, they're, they're fun and playful and, and you know, they're, they're not so much on social media can be like evil and vindictive. These were just fun um, and fun and flattering. All right. But they were things like, oh, you went in for the vaccine, but you really were there for the gun show. And they're talking about the biceps. And, <laughs> and it, so I was I was I was enchanted by how much people were entertained by this simple visual fact. Uh, in the photo. And that's a recent one just from a, a week ago. Favorite vacation spot? I say Iceland. Favorite food? Uh, pepperoni pizza and a strawberry milkshake. I could go to Mars consuming those foods for nine months and not be concerned about uh, <laughs> I wouldn't miss any other food. <laughs> That's the and plus, if you look at the nutritional value, it's quite uh, it's high in protein, fat, carbohydrates. Their vitamin. I may have to supplement with a vitamin or two, but I'm good with that all the way to Mars. Do you have a pet? You mean an animal? Well, could be a pet rock, I suppose. Yeah, no, I grew up with a dog, but uh, I don't. I don't have a pet now. I haven't had one since then. And by the way, I love dogs. I, I walk dogs and earn money bought my first telescope, my second telescope and my, a camera and darkroom equipment, because that's how old I am back when photographs were created in dark rooms. Um, so I have a, a long uh, history and, and appreciation for what dogs are to our lives. Uh, but no, I don't have a pet now. I love dogs too. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, aside from your own books, uh, what's your favorite book? Uh, Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. So you straddle between academia um, and entertainment in many ways. Uh, what have you learned yourself? What have you learned about yourself from being in business? So that could be in the business of academia or the business of entertainment or somewhere in between. What have you learned about yourself from, you know, earning a living this way? Oh, I, I learned that uh, there's no such thing as a balance in life. People come up to you and say, what's your life work balance or your play, you know, joy? And that question has embedded within it the assumption that 
not only is my life balanced, but that a balanced life should be what we all strive for. And I'm not here to value judge that as a goal, but I can say that a life out of balance is one where you are continually having to innovate in how to get things done, how to get things done on time, how to retain the quality of your work, your focus, your concentration. And to lead a balanced life, I think is overrated because it means you, the challenges are diminished because you've struck this perfect balance. And without the challenges, I don't know that you're fully rising to the levels that you can. Yeah, the only thing constant is change. I like it. <laughs> Today is Blur's Day. <laughs> Do you have a nickname? Uh, yes, but I won't share it because I use it for to getting um, in and out of security questions. So you don't get to know my nickname. It, it's a nickname I had it, it, as a child, and no one calls it to me as an adult. So uh, plus, Neil is has only one syllable, so it's hard to turn Neil into a nickname. Um, but I can tell you that my my baptismal certificate, since there is no Saint Neil, uh, that when you're baptized, you have to there's got to be a saint's name there, which I think is you're like who came up with that, right? Uh, but anyhow, there are a lot of saints, so, so uh, I'm actually Cornelius Saint, uh, so I'm Cornelius de Grasse Tyson on the baptismal certificate, but I'm born Neil. Yeah. I like it. What is your definition of a perfect day? Oh, a, a perfect day is a day where I spend quality time um, at home with family. Uh, I watch a good movie. It could be a movie I've seen already. I don't mind that. Or a good new movie. I also have read one of my old, I've read some very old books that reveal how people used to think about the world. And I like tracking that through time. And... Uh, I have a nice bottle of wine with a nice uh, candlelight dinner, although I don't burn many candles anymore, but a romantic dinner. Um, and then uh, and that day I might exercise a bit so that it pumps the muscles. And so it does a little bit of everything that I enjoy most. And then that day becomes a very full and fulfilling day for me. And I have to make sure I learn something, otherwise the whole day is wasted. What gets you frustrated? Frustrated, that's a better word. Yeah, anger is something, I guess some people get angry and I don't, maybe if I am, I don't think that I am. So maybe I'm delusional. But uh, frustrated when I see people who have capacity for thought, first because they're human, but second because you hear other things that they say and comment on, and yet they're completely off the rails with conclusions they draw from what they think. And it saddens me because these are full grown adults behaving this way. People who are certain in themselves that earth is flat or that earth is 6,000 years old. You know, there are things that they're in steep denial of. And I, I think as an educator, there's some missing capacity for analysis that could have been instilled within them in school and was not. And so as a result, they come out as an adult, a, a victim of anything that sort of sounds good and feels good that they want to be true and they thus declare it so. So uh, I'm frustrated by an educational system that graduates people uh, that end up thinking that way as adults. Notice I don't, I'm not blaming them. There's a whole other system in place where you can graduate from high school and say, I have a high school graduate. Well, do you, do you realize that you still read your horoscope and believe that Mars matters in your life? Yeah, yeah, I know it does that, but I'm still a graduate. No, you're not. Go back to school. <laughs> you know? No, no, you have not learned how this world works. Yeah, there might be some people who are, are confused uh, between the difference of astronomy and astrology. You're right. Well, but I just that as, a, as the simplest of examples of how someone can believe something is true that is not. And science is all about deciding, making sure you're not fooled into thinking something is true that is not true or thinking that something is not true that is, all right? Both of those are two sides of the same scientific coin that we carry 
uh, with us that any inquisitive scientist carries with them every day. What was your very first job? I was a uh, camp counselor, a junior counselor at a sleepaway camp. And I was pretty young and I think I was overworked. I mean, child labor laws would probably prevent what that was. Uh, back then, I worked for uh, two months uh, and was paid $150. And I was doing things like hauling seaweed out of the lake that people swam in and, and removing paint from walls. And paint. I, was, I was like all around person. Much less of that time was as an actual junior counselor with student, with campers. So it was basically child labor. I'm pretty sure of it. And I worked pretty hard for that $150, but I was young and $150 meant a lot because I was young. Plus it was a long time ago, but still <laughs> that, that was my first job. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid that humans, you know, I'm, I'm rational enough to, I don't fear the dark. I mean, plus I'm an astrophysicist. So we embrace the dark. Um, I, uh, and I, I tend to be a realist, a practicalist, if there's such a word. Um, I fear the future of our species. I fear that we don't have enough wisdom to wield the power that our science and technology will give us so that future generations can be proud of who and what we were bestowing this world upon them rather than embarrassed by the state of the world that we left for them. So I fear that that's fear. And I try every day to make that fear go away. And the only way to make that happen is get out there and say, this is what you're doing to the ecosystem, to the climate, to the energy balance, to the, and I, that's, that's my way of trying to not be afraid of the future. I would have also have accepted spiders. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that, <laughs> you know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going. Like I say, man, always said it. It's not about the destination. It's all about the journey. Ain't nothing changed but the weather. The dangling carrot that hang from the rear view. Your dreams in the past ain't nowhere near you.